Hey there everybody and welcome back! For those of you that are interested in learning about creating coasters or something kind of similar to that and 3D printing them, stay tuned, I'm going to walk through how to do that in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Alright, so jumping straight in, we are going to be using Tinkercad in today's video. It's a free online resource, so you can head on over to Tinkercad.com and sign up for your free account. There is no credit card required. And then we'll walk through how to set something up. So you'll see we have our work plane here. I'll potentially be doing another video, so make sure you subscribe so that you can uh, get the notification when that pops up. That way you can see my more general Tinkercad tutorial. But basically today we're just going to make something very, very simple, and that's just a coaster, or you could even use this to make something like a metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the coaster shape. So in this case, it would just be a cylinder. So we select the cylinder and then we drop it on our work plane. Now at this point, it's going to be flush with the plane. So you'll just try to figure out where you want it to be. I'm just going to center it for the most part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a bit. And you can do that typically by, uh, if you're on a laptop, you can make the zooming motion or you should be able to scroll up or in. And then you can resize it by grabbing any of the corners. Now, in this case, you would want to make sure that you have your snap grid set up if that's relevant to you. So I'm gonna be just going by millimeters. So you would measure out basically how big you want this to be. So not only is this gonna be important for your printer, but also making sure that the cup that you want or cups will fit in this. So you can look up general sizing but if we just say we wanted it to be a very, very big one. So let's just say we want it to be 71 by about 71 or so. You can click to hide this so that you can see more information. So we will set it to, let's see, 71 by 71. So now you'll see that we have that set up. And when we go to the side, you'll see it's very, very thick. So when we click on this, you'll see we can adjust right here and you'll see it's 20 millimeters, which in my opinion is going to be too big. So we have a couple of options. I'm going to set it to about eight, but again, this is based on your sizes and specs. So the interesting thing is if you want to make a coaster versus a metal, it's just the same action that I'm about to go in two different directions. So you can use the cylinder or the hole option. I'm going to use the cylinder. And then basically what you would want to do is just try to find out where the middle of this object is. Now, if you want, you can look into that, but I'm really just eyeballing. So what I'm going to be doing is I would recommend you can right click and drag to get your view to basically show you the top of the item. So in this case, I'm not really worried about finding the center because I'm, I know what I'm going to be doing. I'm expanding this to the edges of the object beneath it. Now, another option that you have, if you're interested, is instead of drawing it, you can click on this object and hit Control C and then Control V, and you'll get the exact same object size, and it'll just be pasted right next to it. Then you have the ability to basically resize it to match the size of the one that was previously there. Now you're going to want to make sure that you've sized it properly, but what I would recommend is basically you can put them inside of each other and then you can click on one. And then what I would do is just bring it in a little bit on all sides and these will be the edges. So if we wanted something like this, this would effectively be the start to our coaster. Now the interesting thing about this is the coaster and the actual metal would be opposites. So if you want to make a metal, then you would just increase this to bring this one up higher, and then you can draw your design and imprint it on top. In our case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be swapping this out for the whole option, and we will be doing it in the opposite direction. So it doesn't matter how far out you come, as long as it's above the top layer, and then beneath, you can actually just go underneath the plane and you just wanna go up a little bit so that you are not at the bottom. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a hole straight through. Now, the distance here is entirely up to you. You can typically zoom in to see how much distance you want. 
and determine, okay, based on the total height, like how, how thick do you want the bottom of this coaster to be? Now, bearing in mind, if you want to put a design at the bottom of it, you're going to want to add a little bit of more distance between the bottom and the top. So what I mean by that is if we were to set this as our coaster, we now have room to indent a little bit more for our options, so to speak. So what we'll do is we will highlight both of these and then you can typically click on this group option. And within a second or two, you'll see that we now have something that looks much more like a coaster. Now at this point, if this is all you want, you can go ahead and print it, but nine times out of 10, people are going to want a little bit more than that. So you're gonna to wanna to put a name or just something else inside of it. And you also may wanna look into using different shapes in the event that you don't want it to have this, um, like these edges and you want it to be more round. So I do wanna note that the way you see this is the way it's going to print, but I actually don't mind that personally. So if you want text, you can drop text in here and you can resize it and figure out what is center or basically just what you want it to be. And then as you select the text, you can click here and type in whatever you want that text to be. So I'll just type in hello. And then we will resize it a bit. And then at this point, we can select the text and make it a whole. And when we right click and drag, we can figure out by selecting the text, how far in do we need this to go? So in this case, as we're resizing, we can see, okay, it looks like it's probably at or around the bottom. We want it to be just a little bit further. Now what you're seeing right now is one issue that I have sometimes with Tinkercad, which is sometimes you can't really tell which direction you have to be underneath the plane in order to actually see that and not be dragging it towards yourself. So what we'll do real quick is highlight both and we'll click group real quick. And you'll see that we now have the text hello indented and we are not pushing through the bottom, which is exactly what we want. Now you'll wanna make a note of the distance inward that you have this set up, but for now, it's not that big of a deal. So next up, we would want to build maybe some kind of a design. So you have a couple of different options. Um, I'm just gonna start off by making, uh, we'll just say like some mountains. So I'm not the best artist myself, which you'll very quickly learn, but what we can do is we can set up a little block right here, and then we can set up something like, let's just say one of these little triangles. So when we get this triangle here, you'll see that you have a couple of different options for rotating it. And really what I'm looking to do is try to find this triangle's top or bottom so that I can make it duplicated and basically make mountain ranges. So you'll see if I put it right here, it's upside down. And now what we would basically be looking to do is finding the correct rotation so that it will have the shape that we want, which is the basically just a mountain range. So what we can now do is continue to scroll around. Now, if you want, you have different options for how you set this up, but basically we would have this one, let's just say right about here, and then we can duplicate it side by side, and hopefully you kind of get where we're going with this. Now, maybe you want this one to be a little bit taller. It's entirely up to you. And at this point, you can actually move this out of the way. It's not always the best way, but it's an option. And you can group them together. And then I like to drag it back. And you can select the single object and click whole. And this way, as we've done before, you'll see that we would basically just be creating this whole and you'll want to zoom in and make sure that each of these are going down the same distance. So you don't have one that looks like it's going above or below others. So what we'll do, as we know now, is we need to go underneath and make sure that we are not going through like we are right now, uh, basically through to the bottom, as you can see. So you can right click, select the object, and then you can go beneath the plane and adjust the width so that you are not 
pushing through to the bottom. And then you can just browse around and make sure that you're actually going into this coaster. And you can group the two. And you can see that we now have uh, this mountain range. So I don't think the rectangle's there. That's probably a mistake that I made. But the general idea is just that we now have what looks like mountains for the most part. And then our text. So that is really all that there is to it. So now let's walk through exporting this. And you can choose your file type, but I'm going to be using an STL. And you'll see that we have that file here. So now we can minimize this, and we have Cura opened, and we can go into Open, and you can choose Recent, but in this case I haven't actually opened one of these yet, so we'll click Open Files. And we will go to Downloads, and you'll see it's already named. And when we zoom in, you can see we have this file here. And everything looks correct. It looks like it's a relatively decent size. And basically, at this point, all you would need to do is go through your print settings, set everything up. So you would slice it, bring it over to your printer, print it out, see how it works. You can usually check the bed here as a sign of reference for how big this is going to be. So in this case, this would be the size of the Ender 3 V2 bed, roughly. So I would say, okay, based on the size of the bed, this is how big it's going to be. Does that fit or not? And typically in Cura, you can actually scale it if you need to. So we could scale it, make it bigger or smaller, and then slice it and print it. Now, if you have any questions about getting started with 3D printing, I'll put some links in the description to walk through the basics of that. But I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.